Oh, hello, great readers. I'm Bill Chen. I'm Nima Kung. I'm Van Chan. In this class, I'll read all of your part of Great Expectations. Ass. Oh. Great Expectations. Charles Dickens. So, 23 sec 1. Mister. Pocket said he was glad to see me. And he hoped I was not sorry to see him. Paul. I really am not, he added. With his son's smile. An alarming personage. He was a young looking man. In spite of his perplexities and his very grey hair. And his manner seemed quite natural. I used the word natural. In the sense of its being unaffected. There was something comic in his distraught way. Was very new being so. When he had talked with me a little. He said to me once. Fuck it. With a rather anxious contraction of his eyebrows. Which were black and handsome. Belinda. I hope you have welcome, Mr. P. And she looked up from her book. And said. This. She then smiled upon me in an absent state of mind. And asked me if I liked the taste of orange flower water. As the question had no birth. Neo or remote. On any foregone or subsequent transaction. I consider it to have been thrown out. Like our previous approaches. In general conversational condescension. I found out within a few hours. And may mention at once. That mice. Pocket was the only daughter of a certain quite accidental deceased knight. A baronet, but for somebody's determined opposition arising out of entirely personal motives he forgets. If I ever unearth sovereigns, the prime ministers, the lord chancellors, the archbishop of Canterbury's, quite superstitious fact, of the pen, in a disparate address in Gorst of Willem, on the occasion of the laying of the first stone of some building or other and for handing some royal personage either the trial or the mortar. Be that as it may. He had directed my things must marry a title. And who was to be guarded from the acquisition of plebeian domestic knowledge. Judicious print. That she had grown up highly ornamental. But perfectly helpless and useless. With her character thus happily formed. In the first boom of her she had encountered Mr. Margate, who was also in the first bloom of youth, and not quite decided whether to mount to the Wussuk, or to roof himself in with the mitre, as is doing the one or the other was a mere question of time. He and Mice, Pocket had taken time by the furlock when, to judge from its length, it would seem to have wanted cutting, and had married without the knowledge of the judicious parent. The judicious parent, having nothing to bestow or withhold but his blessing, had handsomely settled that dar upon them after a short struggle, and had it from Mr. Pocket that his wife was a treasure for our prince. Waste to Pocket had invested the prince's treasure in the ways of the world ever since. And it was supposed to have brought him in but indifferent interest. Still. Mice. Pocket was in general the object of a queer sort of respectful pity. Because she had not married a title. While well, Mr. Pocket was the object of a queer sort of forgiving reproach. Because he had never got one. Mr. 
Pocket took me into the house and showed me my room, which was a pleasant one. Sitting room. He then knocked at the doors of two other similar rooms and introduced me to their occupants. By name, Dromon Startup. Dromon. An old looking young man of a heavy order of architecture was whistling. Start up. Young in yours in appearance. Was reading and holding his heads. Of knowledge. Both Mr. And mice. Pocket had such a noticeable air of being in somebody else's hands. Yeah. Until I found this unknown part to be the servants. It was a smooth way of going on. Perhaps. In respect of saving trouble. But it had the appearance of being expensive. They're eating and drinking. And to keep a deal of company downstairs. They allowed a very liberal table to Mr. And Mice. Pocket. To have boarded in would have been the kitchen show is supposing the board are capable of self-defense. Poirot. Before I had been there a week. A neighboring lady with whom the family were personally unacquainted. Wrote in to say that she had seen Muller slop in the baby. This greatly distressed mice. Bracket. Who burst into tears on receiving the note. Business. I learnt. And she flee from Herbert. That Mr. Pocket had been educated at Harrow and at Cambridge. Where he had distinguished himself. But that when he had had the happiness of marrying Mice. Pocket very early in. Life. He had impaired his prospects, taken up the calling of a grinder. After grinding a number of dull blades of whom it was remarkable that their fathers when influential were always going to help him to preferment of that after working had come to London here after gradually filling in off to your hopes he had read with divers who had lacked opportunities or neglected them and had refurbished divers others for special occasions and had turned his acquirements to the account of literary compilation and correction. And on such means, added to some very moderate private resources, still maintained in the house I saw. Mr. And mice, back I had a toady neighbour. Oh, a lady of the highly sympathetic nature that she agreed with everybody. Blessed everybody. And shed smiles and tears on everybody. According to circumstances. This lady's name was Mice. Coil. My insulation. She gave me to understand on the stairs. That it was a blow to dear Mice. Pocket that too, mister. Pocket should be under the necessity of receiving gentlemen to read with him. That did not extend to me. She told me in a gush of love and confidence at that time. I had known her something less than five minutes. If they were all like me, it would be quite another thing. But dear mice, forget said mice, quit her. After her early disappointment, not that dear mister. Fuck it was to blame in that. Yes. Mama said, to stop her, for I was afraid she was going to cry. Yes, Mama said again, with the same object as before. That it is hard, said Mice, queer, to have dear Mister Pocket's time and attention diverted from dear Mice. Attention were diverted from dear Mice, Pocket, but I said nothing. And indeed had enough to do in keeping a bashful watch upon my company manners. 
it came to my knowledge. Two a pass between mice, pocket and drum while I was attentive to my knife. And fork. Pff. Spoon. Glasses. And other instruments of self destruction. That drummer, whose Christian name was Bentley, was actually the next year brought into a barn at sea. It further appeared that the book I had seen mice pocket reading in the garden was all about titles. The Bix. If he ever had come at all. Jomel didn't say much. Spoke as one of the elect. And recognised mice. Pocket as a woman and a sister. No one but themselves a mice. Quailer the toady neighbour showed any interest in this. Part of the conversation and it appeared to me that it was painful to Herbert. But it promised to last a long time. When the page came in with the announcement of a domestic affliction, it was, in effect, that the cook had mislaid the beef. To my unutterable amazement, I now, for the first time, saw Mr. Pocket relieved his mind by going through a performance that struck me as very extraordinary, but which made no impression on anybody else, and with which I soon became as familiar as the rest. He laid down the carving knife and fork being engaged in carving. At the moment brought his two hands into his disturbed pair, and appeared to make an extraordinary effort to lift himself up by it. When he had done this, and had not lifted himself up at all, he quietly went on with what he was about. Mice. Quilla then changed the subject and began to flatter me. I liked it for a few moments, but she flattered me so very grossly that the pleasure was soon over. Vitally interested in the friends and localities I had left which was altogether snacky and fructant. And when she made an occasional bounce upon startup, he said very little to her. To be continued.